After a crazy 2020 and 2021, with soaring stock prices and everyone being locked up in their homes, it has become increasingly difficult out there to find value in the stock market. However, there is one tool out there that investors always turn to in times like these, to find wisdom, inspiration and guidance, and that is the intrinsic value. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brent and here on YouTube I provide content in the personal finance and investing space, offering useful and actionable steps to growing your wealth. In this video I'll be sharing my intrinsic value calculation methodology and applying this to an iconic American home hardware chain, Home Depot. If you like the video and would like to see more content like this, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and letting me know down in the comments how you value companies, and together we can share our ideas. Let's get into it. Before we begin, we should probably define what intrinsic value is. Intrinsic value, in essence, is simply an estimation of what an asset is worth, in this case a company, based on a number of variables broadly assessing the future profitability of the company. This assessment of value is extremely subjective and differs from one person to the next, causing there to be an equilibrium price at any one time between buyers and sellers, in other words, the stock market. Here, buyers and sellers exchange stock based on a difference of their perceptions of a company's intrinsic value. The buyers think the price is below the intrinsic value of the company, and the sellers believe the price is above. The recent swings we've seen in the price of GameStop, however, have almost nothing to do with intrinsic value, and everything to do with herd mentality and momentum. The value equation here was more of a network effect. More hype equals more value. But I digress. A model is usually prepared to determine the intrinsic value of a stock, which uses several factors to perform the assessment, predominantly oriented around the future cash flows of the business. These cash flows can be thought of as profits in cash terms, after all cash outgoings of any form have been considered such as interest, taxes, reinvestment in fixed assets, etc. When we assess the value of a stock, we need to consider what a company provides that is actually of value to us as a part owner, and that is the investment returns. For every $1 we invest in the business, how much money is returned to us over the business's lifetime after taking out money the business requires to continue operating and growing? And in addition, we want to assess this in today's money without the impact of inflation eroding our future returns, which is very relevant in today's environment. Let's step into the calculator. So here is a calculator I've prepared. In light yellow you can see the fields we need to find the values for. First of all being the name of the company we want to value. In this case I want to value Home Depot shares, and we can find the stock ticker by just searching for this in Google. The stock ticker is simply just a unique identifier for the business, so you know you've got the right stock. We then need to find the most recent free cash flow. As discussed earlier, this refers to the excess cash produced by the company after all outgoings that took cash out of the business. This can easily be found using Yahoo Finance. We then need to identify the growth rate for the business, and I find it easier to slice this into both a 1-5 to five year and a 6-10 to 10 year component to account for both the short term and the long term growth. The short term growth can easily be found using Yahoo Finance, using their analysis tab, or you can come to your own figure based on your own thoughts. I have done this for the 6-10 to 10 year growth projections simply considering the future US population growth plus an average inflation rate in the US for the past few years as a proxy for how Home Depot's cash flow will grow. The discount rate is simply the minimum rate of return we expect to earn from this investment. Now the S&P 500 has averaged a return of around 8% since the mid-1950s, and as investors when we select individual stocks, we aim to outperform this index as otherwise we could just buy the index. So generally this would be somewhere around the 10 to 15% mark. The terminal value represents the multiple we expect to be able to sell our stock for at a future date, in this case 10 years. Some may use the Gordon growth model here, however I find in most cases this actually overvalues the terminal value, and prefer this methodology we're using in this video. As we don't have an indicative proxy for what multiples may be at this future date, I generally use the EV over a beta ratio. Generally speaking, Faster growth companies such as Amazon will have a high ratio. In cases such as this, we may want to discount this to account for the fact that the high ratio is likely to decline over time as they mature and growth starts to level off. Finally, we source the net debt figure from Yahoo Finance. This tells us the total debt which would remain outstanding should we use the cash and cash equivalents to reduce the debt level. I have some automatic formulas here working out the current stock price, market capitalization, or the aggregated value of all of Home Depot's outstanding stock, 
and the number of outstanding shares. Alternatively, we can also find these easily on Yahoo Finance and plug these in if preferred. Once all this data has been found, we are then good to go in our calculation. The first thing to do is to look at the projected cash flows for the next 10 years. Do these look sensible? And if not, what needs to change to bring this back into line with our expectations? The next row discounts these cash flows over the next 10 years, and the final column multiplies our year 10 cash flow by the terminal value multiplier, reflecting the multiple investors are likely to pay for the company at that time. The formula uses the cash flow as the numerator, and the denominator is 1 plus the discount rate to the power of the number of years we are discounting. The further out the cash flows are, the greater extent to which the cash flows are discounted, as $1 in 3 years will be further eroded by inflation than $1 received today. In addition, we value $1 today more, as we can put that money to work instantly, as opposed to waiting a few years to receive our initial dollar back. From this analysis, the intrinsic value is found to be around the $283 mark, which represents a discount of around $30 on the current price, suggesting it is overvalued. This analysis should serve as an indication of intrinsic value, and is entirely dependent on the assumptions of the model I have included. You may have a different perception of future growth, terminal value multiples, or you're expecting a lower minimum return on holding this stock. All of these will have a material impact on the valuation, and that is exactly why the market exists, as every investor has their own perception, resulting in buying or selling action. To conclude this video, I want to share a couple of my lasting thoughts about this methodology. The first is that this model can easily be changed to reflect your personal preferences, such as including a margin of safety or working from a PE ratio basis. I personally prefer this method as the information is easily accessible and this acts as a simple guide for me to quickly assess a stock's rough valuation before doing any further digging around the fundamentals. The second is that this analysis works best for stable companies with more reliable future earnings. Growth stocks such as Tesla and Block may prove more difficult using this method as they are reinvesting a significant amount of their cash flow into their operations to scale, and therefore discounting the cash flows won't reveal anywhere near the true values of these businesses. In a future video, I will share other common valuation methods that may help provide some flavour around how to value some of these pre-profit or early profit businesses, so make sure to subscribe to keep informed when that comes out. I hope everyone watching this video gained a new appreciation for valuing stocks using the intrinsic value method. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel down below, give this video a thumbs up if it was useful, and I look forward to sharing more content with you in the very near future. Cheers.